<laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about our artist link project. RV Kuzer is actually one of our artists listed in our database. If you go to our uh, website, our access, artsaccessinc.org, and under um, projects, you'll find artist link project. And so this is any artist. Uh, can register with us and it's a we envision this as a database that people and organizations can access to find uh, artists and artists can find each other to possibly work together so uh, if you are an artist you know an artist please um, tell them about our artist league project and have them register now let me tell you about the next act you've already had a little bit of taste little little taste of Doug Capps uh, handiwork Mm -hmm. And in this next piece, it's an idle yet uh, creative uh, interchange between two friends. It's written by Karen Ellison. <coughs> okay, sorry. Um, and uh, please uh, put your hands together for Doug Cap and Tom Haynes. I got a tweet. You got a whole forest of trees. I got a whole forest of trees. Now, say there's only one person for miles around, a guy with one of those red and black jackets and a ski hat, an axe. A lumberjack. Whatever. And he's chopping one of your trees, but he only chops part way. Gotcha. Now, he's pulling out his lunch bag. A red one? Yeah. Like, like your? Yeah. With the matching thermos. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and the guy starts to eat. Oh, lunch? Yeah. <laughs> this guy, this tree chopper. Yeah. He starts to eat, and then he gets a call on his beeper. He got a beeper? <laughs> yeah. This lumberjack, he's out in the woods using an axe to chop a tree. And he's got a beeper? <laughs> Yeah, so he's got a beeper. He works for one of those large tree chopping corporations. A timber mill. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and he gets a call, and he reaches in his pocket for his cellular phone. Because there's no phone booth in the woods. Of course. And he calls the number that's flashing on his beeper, and this guy on the other end says, come on over to the plant, quick. Your wife's having a baby. At the plant? <laughs> no, not the plant, at the hospital. This Mumbajet, he knows about this? <laughs> <laughs> he knows his wife is going to have a baby? Of course he knows about it. He, what do you call it? Help. Well, but the, because the way you said it, you know, hey, come on over. She's having a baby. It, it sounded like a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So, he goes to set down his lunch. So, uh, he, he knew she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, Sam, he knew she was pregnant. She wasn't uh, keeping it from him. She's big as a house, for Pete's sake. <laughs> all right, all right, calm down. Uh, he hasn't... Uh, Maybe been uh, out of town for nine months, uh, chopping trees and stay the uh, the black forest. Uh, no, he works about fifteen miles from home. Fifteen miles. Yeah. <laughs> What's his wife's name? It doesn't matter what his wife's name is. I thought it might matter. It doesn't. Trust me. So. He goes to sit down his lunch. Oh, what's he eating? What? <laughs> it doesn't matter what he's eating for lunch. How do I know that? How do I know it doesn't matter? What if you're going to ask me uh, the contents of his stomach when they pumped it during the autopsy after his car got pushed off the cliff by that 18-wheeler driven by John and Eric 
the perpetrators of the tax fraud that the young lumberjack, Jorn Von Jorn, was about to expose at Shady Acres, the timber mill where he works. <laughs> it might be important. Everything's important to me now. You know that, Harry? Because I don't know. And sure, you're going to say, trust me. <laughs> trust you? Like the time you were telling that joke down at the lodge about the porpoise and the prostitute? Oh, you left out that part about the salad. Salad? <laughs> He's eating salad for lunch. And then the tree chopper runs to his pickup truck and drives off to his wife, whose name doesn't matter, who's having a baby at the hospital. Natural or cesarean? How should I know what kind of salad it was? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this, this tree chop, while he's at the hospital, you know this one tree chopped part way, remember? I remember. Because it's been a while since I mentioned it. I remember. This one tree falls down. Lawsuit. <laughs> Lawsuit. It lands on somebody's car. Who's telling this story? No. There's nothing or no one for miles around. Just trees. 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 So. So. When the tree hits the ground, does it make any kind of noise? Yes. <laughs> Let me get this straight. If a tree falls in the forest, and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's another way to say it. <laughs> no. What? No. <laughs> you don't want some more time? No. I can give you a couple of minutes. I don't need time. The answer's still no. No, huh? No. <coughs> Do you want to ask some questions? No. Like. Are there any animals in the forest? No. Well, maybe you want to ask if there's anything on the ground in the forest. No. Nope. Okay. Grass? No. Dirt? No. Moss? No. Moose skin? No. <laughs> no. No. No sound. Well, this really stinks. I mean, this eats it. You're not playing along. Hey, you ask me a question, I answer. Go ahead. Ask me another. <laughs> okay. It's the beginning of time. And there's this big red bar owned by caveman farmer Wilson. Hey, cut to the chase! Which came first, the chicken? The egg! Is it right after yes. He built the pyramids. The Martians. <laughs> Stonehenge. Stonehenge, primitive wristwatch, built by Martians. <laughs> Why can't you get a good cheap cigar? Inflation. <laughs> what do vice presidents do? Wait for someone to die. <laughs> <laughs> what is it for? Giant gorilla man from Mars. <laughs> Where is Jimmy Hoffa? Yankee Stadium, left field, section 212, seats, D, 8 through 4.